video will explore adult learning participation trends in Canada, including participation in formal, informal, and non-formal learning. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. What are the adult learning participation trends in Canada, including participation in formal, informal, and non-formal learning? What is the distribution of adult learning across the Canadian population? Where are there inequalities or differences in adult learning participation in Canada? And what population does not fully participate in adult learning in Canada? With strong attainment and participation rates, Canada is considered by many to have one of the most accessible formal education sectors in the world. In recognition of the importance of a lifelong approach to learning, an Access and Support to Education and Training survey was conducted by Statistics Canada between June and October 2008. The survey revealed that between July 2007 and July 2008, an estimated 10 million, or 47% of Canadians aged 18 to 64, had participated in some type of formal education credit program or training. Gorad and Selwyn suggest that patterns of participation in formal education are set early in life through such key variables as age, ethnicity, gender, initial schooling, and the literacy culture of the family. They go on to suggest that learners who early in life create a learner identity for themselves unfavorable to further study are unlikely to participate in formal educational activities beyond compulsory schooling. Substantial regional variations in rates of participation in adult education and training exist across Canada. According to data from the 2003 International Adult Literacy and Skills Survey, British Columbians had the highest participation rate among the provinces, at 57%, whereas participation was much lower in Newfoundland and Labrador, where only 36% of adults took part in education and training. A comparison of the results of the 1994 and 2003 survey revealed that while substantial regional differences remain, there were a few notable changes in participation rates. For example, participation across the Atlantic provinces as a whole grew by 60% over that time period. Rubinson identified a number of factors that influence participation in adult education and training. Age is generally the best predictor. Younger adults tend to participate more frequently than older adults. Recent research tends to show that adult readiness to take part in education remains fairly stable from early adulthood to the middle 50s. A sharp decrease in total participation occurs among those 55 years and older. Thus, it seems that the major personal investment in education continues to take place in the early stages of the life cycle. Canada is generally recognized as having, on average, a high level of educational attainment. However, the adult learning participation rate of the least educated Canadian adults is quite low by international standards. According to Livingston and Stowe, the higher an adult's acquired level of education, the more likely that adult is to participate in further education or training. For instance, research by Myers and Miles found that individuals with a university degree are five times more likely than individuals with a high school education or less to participate in adult learning. This relationship holds across all Canadian provinces and territories. The relationship is strongest in Newfoundland and Labrador, where university graduates were 10 times more likely to participate in organized forms of adult learning than those with less than high school. Large gaps in the participation rate between those at the highest and lowest levels of education were also evident in New Brunswick, Manitoba, PEI, Nova Scotia, and Nunavut. Studies on employer-sponsored education and training also reveal a strong positive relationship between initial formal educational attainment and access to employer training. There is also a strong relationship between literacy levels and participation in adult learning. Those with the highest levels of literacy participate in adult learning at much higher rates than those with the lowest levels of literacy. Family background also plays a key role in participation in formal adult learning. For example, there is a strong link between an individual's level of literacy skills as measured by the International Adult Literacy and Skills Survey and the literacy culture of the family in which an individual grows up. Research has also shown that what individuals hope to achieve in their lives, particularly in their educational goals, is often mediated by their parents' values, expectations, and levels of education. Data also reveals that parents' levels of education have a strong influence on respondents' participation in adult education and training. A 2011 study by Statistics Canada found that for men aged 25 to 39, 20% of those with two parents with high school completion had a university degree, while 67% of those with two parents with a university degree had a university degree in 2009. 
For women, the difference was 31% for those with parents with a high school education to 77% for those with university-educated parents. In addition, according to Livingston and Stowe, adults from professional managerial families are three times more likely to obtain post-secondary degrees than those from working-class origins. In Canada, as in many other countries, a sizable majority of adult education is related to employment. According to Statistics Canada's Access and Support to Education and Training Survey, 36% of working-age adults, aged 25 to 64, participated in job-related education or training in 2008, which was an increase from 30% in 2002. Participation in job-related education or training was highest among individuals aged 25 to 34. Canadians who participated in job-related training spent on average 50 hours in their training activities. According to Myers and DeBroker, highly skilled workers participate in more adult education and training than low-skilled workers, and workplace training is more prevalent among workers in larger firms. As well, union members are more likely than non-union workers to receive job training. There are at least two major drawbacks to the high proportion of adult education that comes through employment. The most obvious is that individuals without stable connection to employment have less access to adult education. In addition, employers tend to provide greater amounts of training to employees who already have high levels of education, particularly to their upper-level managers and technical workers. As a result, access to adult education in the Canadian population can be unequal, and those individuals who may need adult education the most receive fewer opportunities to participate. Reports from the New Approaches to Lifelong Learning, or the NAL survey, indicate that 96% of adult Canadians participate in informal learning activities. The NAL survey also found that participation in informal learning does not fall off after the age of 50, as seems to be the case with formal education, and that those without a high school diploma spend as much time in learning activities as those with a university degree. Livingston reporting on the NAL survey indicates that informal learning is extensive throughout the general population and that adults tend to engage in informal learning in all areas related to major life responsibilities. The 2004 Canadian Learning and Work Survey, or the WALL Survey, found that participation in informal learning outside of formal educational settings is extensive in both in terms of the proportion of respondents who report participating in it and the amount of time they devote to various learning activities related to paid work, housework, volunteer work, and their general interests. The survey found that 81% of respondents reported taking part in informal learning, devoting an average of 13 hours a week to this learning. The incidence of informal learning was not very closely related to formal educational levels because high school dropouts and other marginalized groups are very active informal learners. Participation in informal learning was also tracked in the 2003 International Adult Literacy and Skills Survey. Almost all respondents, or 93%, report having been involved in some form of informal learning over the year covered by the study. The most common response was learning by self by trying different ways, followed by learning by watching by getting help from others, both at about 80%, and just over 60% chose reading manuals, references, or other materials, and the use of computers or the internet to learn. The increase in the level of participation in all formal learning activities was positively linked to participants' higher levels of literacy. The NAL survey also found that 66% of the currently employed had participated in some sort of non-formal adult education activity of at least short duration over the past year. Adults with higher levels of educational attainment are also more likely to participate in non-formal education than adults with lower levels of attainment. They can also expect to receive more hours of instruction in non-formal education during their working lives. Permanent workers, long tenure workers, and full-time workers are more likely to pursue non-formal learning. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. How would you explain the adult learning participation trends in Canada, including participation in formal, informal, and non-formal learning? How would you describe the distribution of adult learning across the Canadian population? How could we address the inequalities or differences in adult learning participation in Canada? And what are some of the ways that we could reach those adults who do not fully participate in adult learning in Canada?